Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So today I'm here with another camera review, and this time it's the Fujifilm X-T4, which is a really nice camera. It's an APS-C camera, not a full frame, not a micro four thirds, and it's supposed to be one of the best cameras that you can use for vlogging. Since I like to do vlogging style videos and I like to do videos for my YouTube channel, I thought this would be a nice camera to test out and do a review on. Previously, I've been using the Panasonic G100 and also my Sony a7 II, so this is definitely a nice increase. 4K at 60 frames per second. It's got this nice, fully articulating screen that you can flip it around, which is, hey, perfect for vlogging. Nice battery life. You can put two SD cards in here, and there's different lenses you can get, too. So, of course, your mileage will vary with what type of lens you get and what type of setting that you're shooting in. And then I also have the 15 to 55 millimeter one. So there's some different options that I have here. I'm gonna show off some of the bokeh effect portrait style photo stuff because hey, if you do vlogging, you may wanna take some pictures while you're out there. So let's dive in, take a look at the Fujifilm X-T4 and see what it's all about. But before we do, I do wanna say if this is your first time stopping by the channel, I appreciate you being here. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. Let's take a look at the X-T4. So I'm out doing some test work with the Fujifilm X-T4. I have the 16 to 55 millimeter lens on here, which is nice because it gives you the ability to reach out and touch some people, zoom in, zoom out. And I want you to be able to get a good feel for what it looks like, one, video quality wise, and two, what you get with the audio, so with the built-in microphones. Because whenever you're using a camera like this, of course you want to know, well, what does it sound like? How good is it? And how does it handle the light? And how does it do a lot of other things? So, of course, that can change in the experience with the lenses that you use, but overall, uh, the, the body on this camera is solid, and also I think that the audio pickup is pretty darn good too. Hey, come here. Shake. Yeah. So this is with the optical image stabilization turned on. This is shooting at 4K at 60 frames per second. And I'm just doing that some walking around because of course if you want to have a camera that you're going to use for vlogging, then ideally you want something that works really well when it comes to the image stabilization. You're going to go out, walk around in the town, go out, do some trips, some outdoor things, all that fancy stuff. So this should give you a good feel for how well it works whenever. I mean, this is just holding the camera with my hand and the built-in optical image stabilization because of the IBIS or the in-body image stabilization that's in the camera. So it's pretty cool and of course it works 4K at 60 frames per second which makes things look a lot more smooth and crispy. So this is with the optical image stabilization off. So you'll notice that I mean it's a little bit more choppy and bumpy than it was with it turned on but overall I think that the video quality is pretty good with the X-T4 especially from my experience based on the cameras that I've been using but this makes for a pretty decent vlogging camera especially because of the versatility and the in-body image stabilization is really really good for stuff like this. So this is handheld and I'm shooting on 4k at 60 frames per second right now with the using the regular built-in microphones that are inside of the camera. So I wanted to go ahead and do this real quick so you can get a feel for what it looks like. Also, the lens that's on here is really nice. The 16 to 55 millimeter gives you the ability to zoom in, zoom out, and all that good stuff. It's very, very versatile, and I think that it's a nice lens that you can use for a whole lot of different settings. I've used it for outside, used it for inside, used it for motion. So I think that it's pretty well capable, and this should give you a good idea for what the camera looks like and how it sounds. Talking about the Fujifilm X-T4, I really like this camera a lot. It's definitely the best camera that I've ever tested out, but if you've checked my YouTube channel, I don't have a lot of camera reviews. I've been using the Sony a7 II and also the Panasonic Lumix G100. When it came to this one, the reason that I checked this one out and reached out to Fujifilm to see if I could review it 
was because it's supposed to be one of the best cameras for vlogging. So this is not a technical video talking about all the amazing, wonderful video things that you can do from a cinematic perspective. This is about vlogging. And some of the first things I noticed as far as using this for a vlogging perspective is it's not the lightest camera in the world. Definitely, you can get lighter ones. If you look at like the, 60, the Sony a6600, you look at the Panasonic Lumix G100, you look at the Sony ZV-1, those are really small and they're lightweight, compact, that's great. But they're not as well-rounded as this. Now this is an APS-C camera, which means it has a smaller sensor in it. It's not a full frame, but it's also not the same as a Micro Four Thirds. So this right here, a lot of people have actually rated this as being one of the best APS-C cameras out there. It's got a good sensor. It's capable of shooting 4K up to 60 frames per second, and that's really important. That's one of the reasons it costs so much money, $1,699 baseline price. And the reason that I wanted to get one of these is the other cameras that I have, they don't shoot 4K at 60. They always shoot 4K at 30. And that's what you get when you get like these $1,000 and under cameras. And I understand that. Whenever you use a camera to shoot 4K at 60 frames per second, it uses a lot of power. It builds up a lot of heat. That's why they tend to shut off after a little while. And this one will give you 20 minutes. 20 minutes of shooting 4K at 60 frames per second or 50. So if you go lower than that, you get about half an hour, which is fine. The great thing about this is it has full manual controls on it. Everything is up on the top. You can manually adjust like every single setting on here, which is totally amazing. And then this is one of the things I love the most about it. It has a dedicated video and camera profile. All you have to do is just flip this switch right here and go from still to movie mode. And then you've got a different profile there and that affects how things work inside of the system. So the menu in here I think is actually pretty good. Dedicated menu button right there and then you can go into the settings. So once you get into the menu settings, that's where things get crazy because you have a separate setting for the video and also for the camera and it doesn't mess the two up. It's not like you have one setting and then you wanna flip over from being a photographer to being a videographer and then you need to change everything. No, you don't have to. So that's nice that it keeps it separated that way and then you've got the locks on the wheel knobs here so that you can use that and lock them into place for however you want them and it just makes life so easy. And it's also nice because there's a dedicated video mode over here for HDR as well. So if you wanna fire it up and use HDR, it's just a flip of a knob on the back. So much stuff is right here at your fingertips. It makes it so easy. When it comes to the viewfinder, it actually works pretty good. I don't have any complaints there other than if you get anything remotely close to it, <laughs> it, it, it does the face detection really good, but it's like, I don't know, probably a good three inches out from the, the viewfinder and it will it'll shift it over into in there. So if you actually get something there, one time I thought I had turned the screen off and I didn't realize I just had something too close to that. But standard three inch screen, but what's really nice about it is it's fully articulating. So you can flip it around. It's not just, it doesn't just rotate. It rotates and it pivots on the axis as well. So you've got a lot of cool things going on here, which makes it ideal for being a vlogging style camera because all you have to do, flip the screen around like this, ta-da and then you can see yourself, which is what you want with the vlogging camera. And that's why you have the flip out screen. And apparently this was a big upgrade over the X-T3. The X-T3 just had the standard pivoting one on the back, but it didn't flip out around the side. Not only does this one flip out, it also rotates on different axes. So that's some of the cool features when it comes to the vlogging. It has built-in microphones, which are actually pretty good. Of course, you're gonna have standard issues with like wind noise and things like that, but I feel like the pickups are pretty good. So one really cool thing about the microphone setup on here is you can use a powered or unpowered mic. So there's two different options here. You have remote and mic. So you can just plug in whichever one you have. I think that's good as far as versatility, but it comes at a sacrifice because there's no dedicated headphone jack on here. So you can listen in and do your sound check and all that stuff. You've got the little meter that tells you what you're peeking out at, but you can't hear what the actual sound quality is. You can use the USB-C dongle though, which will allow you to plug in a headphone jack. So that's there. I guess they just ran out of places for headphone jacks on here, I don't know. Now, one other cool thing, over here, you're gonna notice you've got dual storage slots. Now, I've only got one occupied right now, but you can do two things. You can record simultaneously on both cards, which is something that's really neat, or you can record on one and then it will start recording on the other one as that one gets full. And then you can take this door off. So being able to take the door off is also nice because sometimes having these things in the way well, they get in the way. And I have that issue frequently whenever I'm recording with cameras, it's like stuff's getting in the way, the wires, moving things on the tripod or whatever you're trying to do. Uh, that stuff, 
they've put a lot of work into making sure that this is a streamlined experience and it's very practical and it's very easy to maneuver. See, I'm not a camera expert. I'm just a guy using a camera. I, I've spent the last couple of years of my YouTube career using a phone to record all my videos. This is being recorded on an iPhone 12 Pro Max right now. When you get into the actual camera, the camera interface is straightforward. It's something that you can actually use. It's not like trying to decipher Morse code or trying to read hieroglyphics. A normal lay person like me who doesn't have a lot of camera experience can go in there and find things. So I like that. Now it does have IBIS in it, in-body image stabilization, five axis, which is really nice. And that's another important feature when it comes to being a vlogging camera. You wanna be able to walk around with this and shoot film. You wanna be able to like be on like a street car and like recording footage while you're going by. I mean, auspicious goals. I know 2019 life there, but going into 2021, hopefully people can get back outside and go do awesome things again. And that's one of the things about the year 2020. A lot of people found ways to creatively get outdoors this is a great way to capture it. And hey, shooting video and having a good time is a very good way to enjoy yourself. So this right here, I like it a lot. And it can be very complex and it can be very simple. It can be something as soon as putting everything on auto and hitting the record button, or you can go in and change all the stuff, all the exposure, the ISO stuff. You can change so many things. And then there's a wide variety of lenses to choose from. So this lens right here, this is a 16 to 55 lens and Fujifilm was actually nice enough to send me this and another lens as well. Uh, I got a nice lens so I can shoot the portrait shots with the bokeh effect. And this takes some really good photos. So you can go ahead and see some of these photos. I took these, uh, all sorts of different stuff, messed with the ISO, did some manual control stuff, shot some HDR, some non-HDR. Portrait shots I thought were excellent, and I've never really been one where it's like, okay, cool, yeah, I mean, my camera takes good shots, why do I need a regular camera? Or my camera takes good video, why do I need a dedicated camera? And then taking this out and shooting some of the pictures that I took with it in different light modes, that's the biggest thing. I took a lot of different pictures and I took some video shots in different varying lighting situations, and whether it's dark or whether it's a light, the full manual controls and just, the, the camera just handles things so well for you that it makes for a really good experience. And that's where a lot of the nice expensive stuff comes into play. There's definitely reasons why cameras cost $1,600, $2,000 as opposed to five, six, seven hundred dollars Of course, those are great starting cameras, but this right here really takes things up a notch. Now, the battery life on here is pretty good. You can use it for well over an hour of recording time, which is something that's important. And I like that. Now, I had issues with the Sony ZV-1, especially using it as a vlogging camera. The battery was dead after like 25 minutes. It was terrible. The Panasonic G100, I got about an hour or so out of that one, and this one even gets beyond that. And that's one of the benefits of having a bigger camera. You get a bigger body to house a bigger battery. So yes, those are some of the things about here. I do want to show off some of the footage now so you can see some more of that. Also, it's capable of shooting slow-mo at up to 240 frames per second but it does that at a reduced resolution of 1080p. You can do 120 frames per second at 4K, so you've got that going for you as well. I think that pretty much wraps things up on my review of the Fujifilm X-T4. Really solid camera, has a lot to offer, as you saw in the video, lots of different features. It's very well specced out, very capable, and not just for regular shooting video, not just for still photography, which is very good at both of those, but especially shines as a vlogging camera. Really enjoyed it, and hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully this gave you some of the information that you needed. If you're interested in this product, looking to pick one up. And again, a big thanks to Fujifilm for sending this out for me to test out and review. But again, solid device, and I don't think you can go wrong if this is something that you're looking for. So that's all I've got. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comments section. I will get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you guys next time.